I'm here with June Barrow-Green from the Open University. June, you were involved in a, a panel session here at the International Congress of Mathematicians about the gender gap and the history of the gender gap in maths and the natural sciences. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of women in mathematics? Um, yes, well, um, in my presentation at the panel, I looked at just a few women, but women who were what I would say in the uh, business of producing maths and developing maths rather than the women who were using maths. And I think the point I wanted to make, well, various points, but one of them was that there were women who were enabled to do mathematics, particularly, say, someone like um, Emily de Chatelet, um, Mary Somerville. I mean, they produced uh, amazing works, both um, Emily de Chatelet, her translation of Newton's Principia into French is still the version used today. It had a commentary by her, so she was actually adding to uh, the mathematical canon. And Mary Somerville, similarly, with her book on um, the mechanism of the heavens, which was a translation of Laplace's Mechanique Celeste and was used as a textbook in Cambridge University. But neither of these women, they couldn't be um, in the kind of professional world, if you like. So, for example, Mary Somerville actually had a paper published by the Royal Society, but there was no way she could be a fellow of the Royal Society. That just was not something that would even be considered. And, in fact, women um, were not admitted as fellows of the Royal Society until 1945. I mean, Hertha Ayrton, who was actually proposed for fellowship of the Royal Society at the beginning of the 20th century, um, one of the reasons she was turned down was because she was a married woman and therefore had no status in law. Um, so uh, my point really was that it's, it's the fact that women, they couldn't be engaged, I mean they, obviously they weren't getting professorships or anything like that. I mean the first um, British woman who had a professorship was Charlotte Scott and that was at Bryn Mawr in the US um, and she was the first woman really to triumph in the Cambridge Mathematical Tripos but she only was, she was allowed to sit it, she was given permission to sit it, she couldn't sit it by right. Actually after her triumph in 1880 she was equivalent to the the eighth wrangler, they, women were then allowed to sit in the mathematical tripos. Um, but they couldn't graduate from Cambridge, um, they couldn't be considered graduates until 1947, 48, um, because uh, the men actually didn't want them because it would give, them, give the women power. Um, because if you were a graduate, you then had voting rights at the university. So there are these kind of professional barriers for, for women. Um, so I think that was one of the most important things I wanted to, to get across. And another area where that, you see that playing out is in publication. Um, the kind of barriers for women publishing mathematics. Um, I quoted a letter from um, William Henry Young to his wife Grace Chisholm Young, written in about 1902, where um, he had been her tutor at Cambridge. Uh, she had gone to Germany, done a PhD, the first woman actually to get a PhD in Germany in anything, but um, the first woman in mathematics. Um, she comes back, she marries um, William Henry Young, they have a very productive um, r mathematical relationship. But in 1902, he's writing to her and saying, you know, we must publish our joint papers under my name alone, because otherwise they won't be, con you know, recognised. Um, and then only later, maybe, we can put your name to them. So it's not that there weren't women doing mathematics, producing mathematics throughout history, it's that there were obstacles in their way to being recognised and, and got professionally. Yes, exactly. And the, it, the panel discussed the perspective from physics and maybe the current day perspective. Were there any interesting points that came up during the panel and the discussion itself? Well, I think one of the most um, important points was it's, it was very noticeable um, in this ICM that of all the eight major medals that are awarded at an ICM, four of them being the Fields Medals, um, not one of them was awarded to a woman. And at the last ICM in Seoul um, in 2014, um, a Fields Medal was famously awarded to Mary Mercy Carney. Um, and so this was a real matter for concern, that none of the, um, the medals were awarded to a woman. And what came out of the discussion was that there is a problem, I think, with the nomination procedure, because you can't award a medal to a woman if a woman hasn't been nominated. And I think women are perhaps more reluctant to nominate other women um, or even to nominate anybody and actually kind of uh, maybe not as 
savvy about the nomination process as men are. So this is really, I think, a very important point and I think something that has now been kind of really brought to the fore and, and hopefully will mean that at the next ICM the work of women has been recognised. Because it's not that there aren't women worthy of winning these prizes, but they actually have to be put before the, the committees who are awarding them, otherwise they are powerless. Now, your work is on the history of maths and physics sort of in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Um, what, what drew you to that area of research? Right, well, when I was doing my undergraduate degree at King's College in London, um, I was first of all drawn by the names of, of mathematicians that came up in the courses, um, but the, it was the names of theorems, bolzano weierstrass theorem. I mean, I thought, gosh, bolzano weierstrass is a really exotic name. I mean, I didn't even know it was two different people. I mean, that's shocking to admit now, but... Um, and, and so I was interested in those people, but I was also interested in how the mathematics we were being taught at that time came to have the shape that it did. Um, particularly, some of it seemed a little bit too difficult um, and I thought does it have to be this difficult why did they do it this way and so and actually a lot of the mathematics you do as an undergraduate is essentially 19th century maths so I kind of wanted to kind of get under the skin of that and that's what drew me into that area. If you you here at the in Rio at the International Congress mathematicians um, what have you enjoyed have you enjoyed your time and what have been your highlights? Oh, I've had an amazing time. It's just been the most incredible Congress. Um, and beginning with the opening ceremony, um, and I mean, one of the most moving things I think I've ever seen in my career really was the film um, about um, Kosha Burka, the winner, the first, he was the winner of the Fields Medal, and he, his film was actually the first because they did it alphabetically. And it was just so moving about his childhood. Um, and you know, as a Kurd, and um, and how he came to England as a refugee, and um, I think everybody I've spoken to has just been so completely moved um, by him, um, and it's just such an inspirational story. So, so that was a, you know that set the the tone really well. Well, I hope you enjoy the last few days of the Congress, and thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Rachel.